We've been working on this project for a little over five years, maybe pushing six. And uh, it's really exciting for, I think everyone that's been involved in this. Seven years ago, the, the Wyoming Game and Fish Department uh, and I kind of identified the, this bank above and below the bridge here as being an issue. This bank has been an issue for a long time. It's been, it's been contributing about 1,600 tons of, of sediment to this, to this river every year. Uh, that means that it's eroding that much. That's like 100 dump truck loads a year into the Green River and into Flaming Gorge. So that's one of the issues we've, uh, that, that we're trying to address. One of the other issues that we're trying to address is just fish habitat. And then um, also just, just making a, a good, a good part of the, the river for, for everybody here in, here in town. I'm John Freeman. I'm the chairman of the Green River Greenbelt Task Force. Uh, we started the Greenbelt Task Force 31 years ago. Um, we we're real excited about this TU project uh, to stabilize the bank um, in uh, FMC Park and, and next to the, uh, um, the Scotts Bottom Nature area. When we started the Greenbelt uh, Task Force, from this parking lot, we put a trail that went over to the Scotts Bottom Nature Area Pavilion. Uh, it was probably the most used trail that we, we put in besides the paved ones. Um, the contractor was told to put a 10 foot wide um, uh, asphalt, crushed asphalt uh, trail in and to have 15 feet, a minimum of 15 feet between the edge of the trail and the, um, and the river. Uh, most of that trail is gone. Uh, the river comes around under the bridge hits this, this bank and this keeps going down and um, basically we've created islands and passageways on the other side. What this project will do is it'll stabilize this bank and, uh, and at the bottom of it put in a, a culvert to where that we can put water into the, into the uh, lower, lower areas of Scott's Bottom to, to help the trees maintain um, and grow and hopefully uh, flourish. I'm Dave Kimball and I work for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and I share an office with Nick and when I moved over three years ago he said I could share an office but I had to help with the project um, and uh, actually I think we were involved a little before then but uh, um, yeah it's been a really good project to work on and uh, some of people that live here and spend time down here you're gonna know a lot of this but you know there's that side channel that goes over there and uh, um, there's a lot of wetland values to that side channel fish use it too but uh, um, you know some some of this project is being we kind of got funding more in the name of of wetlands for some of the funding and uh, um, there's a a couple great things about stabilizing this bank and preventing the, I mean, it's all, there's always going to be a gravel bar on that side, but as far as it's not going to keep advancing as much as it is, because as that gravel bar is advancing, it's kind of gradually cutting this side channel. And then there's another more uh, seasonal temporary side channel that you can't see on the other side there. But that one's getting cut off even more. Um, those rock barbs that he talked about push the main force of the channel out that direction. So it, it'll provide more connection there, especially up there where we harvest some of that gravel out of that bar. We'll provide more connection there um, and just kind of maintain that because the way, um, the way it's headed now, if nothing happens, if we never did anything, that probably would go away eventually.
There's a couple techniques that we're using uh, to address these this erosion issues. The first one is just kind of just hard and rip wrap stuff. And I think everybody's seen that. That's these larger boulders and they're gonna be sitting on the bank. And that's, that's mainly going right around the bridge, just downstream, a couple hundred feet. From that point, about 400 feet down is going to be a really unique technique. It's called tow wood, and that's what all these logs are for. They're they're really great for fish habitat. They they act kind of like a, a rip wrap and stabilization. A lot of the log you see right now is going to be buried. So there's going to be 30 30 feet or so of that log is going to be buried. The only part that's going to be sticking out is kind of the root root mass, and that's what that's what we need. That's what creates the fish habitat and the roughness needed to, to stabilize the bank. A lot of the river is going to be moved out. So, so this, this bank itself, we're gonna, we're gonna fill in a bunch and move, move the river out and then and then take the point bar that's across the river and kind of fill, use that as fill to, to fill in this, this big hole here. The other technique is this uh, boulder mini vein. And essentially what those do is instead of having to do tow wood all the way down, which is expensive as you can imagine, um, we're essentially building a, a, a large wing wall into the river to divert the flow back into the center of the river and take the pressure off the bank. So what it's at an angle, the highest, the highest point of these is gonna be up on the bank a low point is going to be in the river, so as that, as the stream moves across it, it's going to be pushed back into the center of the center of the river. And then along with that, the bank will be sloped back instead of being a, a sheer drop, a, for just a vertical drop into the river. It'll be a, a nice a nice sloping bank where they can act, where we can actually vegetate it and and plant you know, riparian plants and things like that. We want to thank Trout Unlimited and um, all the organizations that have come together for this project here. Uh, conservation isn't a single entity, it's not a single individual, it's a group of people that come together, see a resource that has need and, and work together to, to find solutions that benefit wildlife, humans. Uh, thing about water, thing about wetlands is 900 species of animals rely on it, including humans, so it behooves us to really take care of this resource. So we want to say thank you from the Ducks Unlimited family to everybody who helped support this and the friends at Trout Unlimited and um, thank you for your support of conservation.